All right, everybody. Uh, round three action. Two undefeated players here. We've got Logan Cutlip on the left. He's on Esper control. Uh, his opponent is Justin Carpenter at a round one bye. On his way to a 2-0 start. He unfortunately is on the play with a mulligan to five. Starting off with turn one, Nick, though. It's not where he wants to be. This match, or this game, rather, could very easily be decided simply by Justin's bad luck. Justin playing a rather interesting Prime Speaker deck. Uh, it looks like it's just blue-green. I could be wrong. There are some red cards in it, but I think those red cards are all hybrid. I think he's playing some Burning Tree Emissaries and some uh, some Pit Fights in the sideboard. Of course, those have hybrid mana, so... So Justin draws two lands off the top in consecutive turns here, so making a go of it after all. And we see a second Voyaging Seder. Going to untap his land and cast a Scavenging Ooze. And the Ooze is going to meet a Syncopate for one. So Justin already suffering some uh, poor luck here, but uh, he also has one of those awkward draws that these decks often have, with all the ramp and none of the business. So six mana on board here, he has a Burning Tree Emissary and an Aaliyah in his hand. Logan does not have Dissolve mana up here, so interesting decision to play that Hallowed Fountain tapped. Looks like Justin can go Burning Tree into Nalia. Burning Tree into... Oh, I don't like this at all. I think Burning Tree into... Let's see. Burning Tree makes two mana. Activate Nykthos for four. Then you can untap, get two more up to six. Untap, get two more up to eight. Cast and Lee and activate it once, but I don't think that's very good. Maybe it's, maybe it's fine. And a verdict is going to sweep the board. So Justin, uh, free to cast whatever he wants to here, but he is down a considerable amount of cards, so he can still fire off the Burning Tree Emissary and then chain into the Nalia. <laughs> That's exactly what he does. Just passes the turn back, so a couple mana symbols away from turning that Nalia on. He does have a Prime Speaker in his hand. Then Logan just passes back on 5 mana. So Logan getting a read on Nalia. Creatures have trample, and for four mana you can activate and pump a creature two by two. Man, I am struggling tonight. It's like the most rudimentary commentary I've ever done in my Slogan going to de-sphere the Nalia. Nalia not really doing much at this point, but at least it gets it off the board. And Justin sandbagging this. Well, I guess he's not sandbagging. He doesn't have a fifth land. 
as the uh, Nykthos doesn't currently generate mana or profit mana. It only with with the out it only tap for three. There's a thought seize. So Prime Speaker is going to the bin. <laughs> Emphatically at that. I guess this deck is just blue green devotion. So Justin suffering the long-term effects of that mole to five on the play to start the game. He is of House Greyjoy here. As his sleeves indicate, he is ironborn. There's a forest off the top. There's a Doom Plate on the Burning Tree Emissary. Logan in, uh, in the abundance of riches at this point where he can afford to spend a Doom Blade on his uh, on the 2-2 Grizzly Bear. But it does turn on Devotion, and the only way Justin's going to get out of this is to abuse Nykthos. So I'm not sure what the other card in, in Justin's hand is that he was considering a... Uh, a response there, but just passes the turn back. Logan on six mana, looking for a win condition here. Question in the chat, when is our IQ? That is going the Star City Games Invitational Qualifier is Saturday, April 5th at 12 noon. As we see Logan unload on a Sphinx's Rev for four. As he digs desperately for an Aetherling or an Elspeth to try and lock this game up. Evil Beard in the chat. How you doing, buddy? Our good friend and longtime stream viewer, Eric, aka Evilbeard, recovering some from some surgery today. So wish him the best of luck. Good to see you up and about. Well, at least not up and about in the literal sense, but feeling good enough to check in on the chat. It shows the dedication of a. Uh, of a stream fan to exit anesthesia from a major surgical procedure to immediately get <laughs> get online or on your phone to watch our silly imaginary wizard fights broadcast. So Logan finds a Jace Architect of Thought, goes upstairs with it, then plays a plays a watery grave untapped, usually an indication of a syncopate. So end of turn here, Justin is going to bounce this detention sphere. And Logan decides to fight over it with a uh, syncopate for two. Is that Voyaging Seder live? If that Voyaging Seder doesn't have summoning sickness, he could pay for two. But, uh. Can't remember if he cast that last turn or not. I think that he did. And there is a Garrick Caller of Beasts. So Logan keeping Nalia off the board. But, uh, is gonna eat an, a Garrick here. And let's. Go ahead and lead the stampede. Look at the top five. There's an ooze. There's a burning tree. Forest. Elvish Mystic. And another land. So six mana draw three. 
next turn, uh, Justin's going to be able to go a little bit crazy here with uh, with his Nykthos. He has a second Nykthos in hand, so Logan's really looking for a D Sphere here to answer this Garrick immediately. And there he has it. But the damage already done to a certain extent. As Justin's going to be unload basically his entire hand of creatures. Should he choose to, I mean, he's playing against the uh, the Supreme Verdict deck, so there is some questionable uh, value to that kind of all-in play. So Logan representing counter magic here. He also is a quick and supreme verdict deck, so that's very much a possibility here. It would be the biggest blowout possible. So Justin starts his turn off with a mystic. Now into a burning tree. Triggering two mana. There's a blue mana to go along with the other two. I think just making sure our mechanics are correct here. So there's two mana there. Nick those for four. So there's an ooze floating two. Use the extra mana to activate the ooze a couple times. So deciding not to chain his second Ichthos or to untap with the Voyaging Seder. So not sure exactly what uh, what we're doing here. As the Jace tip ticks up ever closer to ultimate, it will ultimate on eight. So verdict inbound. It looks like. Elf is summoning sick. that that life point is going to end up being the deciding factor of this game, but you never know. You never know. So Justin attempts to reload here. There's a Mystic. Looks like another copy of Garrick in his hand, but he's a little... He's a ways off from... Why well, not a ways off? He can cast it next turn. What are we doing here? Taking a month of Sundays.
cannot remember for the life of me the name of that card, and it, it escapes me each and every time, but it is the creature that is gets counters equal to your devotion to green. But there's an ultimate from Jace. And rather than... <laughs> Rather than uh, let Justin, uh, interesting here, uh, rather than let Logan look through his entire deck, So Justin down a game in this round three feature match on the mold to five here on the play. Two games in a row, he's mold to five. Not the place you want to be against your Esper control opponent. Logan riding a Jace Architect of Thought to victory in game one as Justin conceded to the ultimate. And here in game two, Justin trying to fare better than his game one performance where he could just never get a foothold as Logan's removal and counter magic kept him at bay. Hey, Scotty. I saw Garrett and Adam out there, so I figured you were solo in here. Yep. We're just watching this match between Justin and his blue-green devotion deck, who's mulled the five in both games. Ugh. On the play, both games. Ugh. Totally crushing it. So Justin's scrying a card to the bottom here, so he's just drawing blind off the top. And that's not a good sign when you commence the uh, Elvish Mystic beatdown and play your Breeding Pool tapped. I don't know the full contents of Justin's deck. I do know he's playing the Cure's Follower, and I know he's playing Prime Speaker. Mm -hmm. And, he, of course, he's got the Devotion package. But I think he's also playing... Um, Played against him once... There's another card in this deck that's pretty fun. Prophet. Yeah, Prophet. Yeah, the Prophet, Prophet of Crufix. Nick those Primordial, I think, even. Five mana for the aforementioned Prophet, which was... I was going to say E to uh, uh, Dissolve, but uh, Logan does not have Dissolve mana. EOT Doomblade does just as well. Here is a thought seize. I have a manoplasm and a Sylvan Primordial. Uh, two, three, four, five. So we're a long ways away from casting that Primordial. Which <laughs> Logan chooses the counter spell, then counts the mana he has to see how far it is away from casting it. I guess Logan just trying to figure out if he can cast it next turn, which he cannot. Yes, it's the kind. It yeah, it's revelation. Is that like a is that a sideboard card as well? Uh, I would think so. Yes. Because you really want to dilute your main deck with counter magic, right. especially since your deck doesn't really do anything. You know what I mean? Like, right. there's a lot of, or I should say, there's a lot of cards in Justin's deck that don't do anything. They're just it's a, it's a ramp deck. Half your deck is ramp, and unless you're ramping into something big, it's just a bunch of innocuous creatures. But Ramp decks are usually like that, like the modern mono green ramp that I was playing there for a while. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to decide the word. Is it a cure? Yeah, yeah, there's a cure's follower, which uh, could generate a lot of mana <laughs> if you yeah, have. <laughs> if you had a Nykthos. 
So here's six mana. Logan facing down three power of attackers at 15 life. Notice his opponent has a counter spell in hand. His opponent can't. Yeah, his. Oh, he took the plasma, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, he has a Sylvan Primordial. The Sylvan Primordial is coming down next turn. Which means it's likely going to be to dissolve. I would think. think. At least at this point, the worst thing that could happen is Logan loses a land. Um, but. And he does have three blue sources, so it's not that big a deal. But, uh. Mm -hmm. Just gonna serve it. We've drawn an Ilea. Okay. Ilea is far from active at this point. End of turn rev, which is a. It's a pretty obvious reason why Logan took the counterspell, I guess. But the way Justin's played this, uh, well, he doesn't have the counterspell, but... There's almost a point at which you are fine with Justin sitting back on counterspell mana. Because he's not doing anything, and the longer the game goes, the better Logan this is going to be anyway. Because at some point he's just going to cast something, Logan's going to try to counter it, or Justin's going to try to counter it, and then he's just going to protect it with another dissolve. It smells like a verdict. Nope. Touch sphere. D sphere on Nalia. Just passes back, representing dissolve here. I think I saw one when he was flipping, but I couldn't see anything else. And I, if you're Justin, I don't think you can afford to not cast it. Because eventually he's going to find Verdict in yes. your three. Yeah, your mana right now is dependent on those two creatures surviving. Is it going to be to dissolve? More than likely. You're also dead to a syncopate here. Um, but I don't, I don't know. Here it comes. Okay. Mm, too much short. Yep. And it is in fact a dissolve. Logan leaves that card on top. Cannot be good for Justin. It's a verdict. I'm pretty sure that just kind Well, of both of up. these games we've seen so far, it's, they're frustrating because I'm sure Justin's deck does a lot of fun things. But mulling to five on the play in both of them have just, just been disastrous. I mean, just, to be fair, Justin hasn't really got to play a lot of magic. No, it's only five mana. No, it's six. Oh, okay. There's one hidden there in the middle. Yep. Tick it up, make some tokens, and then Justin is in a world of hurt here. So what does he need to come up with here? He needs to come up with two more mana sent... Well, that, that won't even work because it doesn't have haste. Let's see if he can get an Aaliyah active... Just rip another Primordial and kill that Elspeth. Yeah, that'd be a good one. What are we needling? Cura's follower? Ask him what he needled. Brian, what they need? What, ask him what he did they needled. Group Primal Hunter. Okay. No, Caller of Beasts. Group, group, Caller of Beasts. Which seems fine. That's the, if you can't counter it on its way down, that's the the card that does the most damage to you. Right. And it's also the card that it does the damage. I mean, you can desphere it, but it does the damage before you can actually cast your sorcery speed removal spell. So if you're going to preemptively cast a needle on something, that's the way to go. All right. So Logan has assumed the beatdown plan now. He's got his custom soldier tokens there. <laughs> I mean, Justin is uh, representing House Greyjoy here. So, you think that you have a better shot there. So, we're definitely syncopating this for one, two, three. those two cards in Justin's hand or maybe he's got another plasm capture and he really uh, it looks like land and something else land and burning tree emissary why wouldn't you play land or why wouldn't you play burning tree emissary <laughs> oh, I'm 
See, now we've got different tokens. This seems like a rookie mistake from uh, from Logan here. Two mana for a last breath on Kiora's follower. Last breath or a Doomblade? Sorry, Doomblade. Servant for five. Servant for five, and uh, Justin's going to take it, valuing the mana off of his elf more than uh, his life total. I cannot tell what he's holding. I'm telling you, it's a burning tree. He did the same thing in game one, and I think he's trying to preserve the, um, trying to preserve his devotion count, as we see Logan Rev for. I can understand not wanting to play into verdict, but when you're facing down that many tokens, yeah, you, you need just, a, you, you just need something to commit, right? It's fine. We just ultimate Elspeth and go here, right? Yep. And that's going to be good <laughs> enough. So unfortunately, Justin's deck failing him in both of those games, but. Uh, we haven't seen an archetype before. Joe Lewis has played it before. It is very fun. Any deck that's hard casting uh, or overloading Cyclonic Rift is fine by me. Mm -hmm.